Hey friends, Misty here with Christians Do Yoga. Today I am bringing you a yin practice. Our scripture focus is going to be Psalms 40, and I have titled this practice, Waiting on God. So go ahead and grab your yoga mat, grab some blocks if you have them, and meet me in a seated posture. In a yin practice, we hold our postures longer than in a vinyasa, flowy style practice. So if you have blocks available, go ahead and grab those. If you don't, it's okay. Um, you can go through this practice without them. But our first posture that we're going to come into is a toe squat. So coming from your table, sitting back on your toes, this can be a little bit intense, so if at any time you need to release the toes and come to a seated posture, go ahead and do that. But once you're in your toe squat, let's go ahead and bring our hands to heart center. I want you to start relaxing those shoulders, pulling your shoulders away from the ears, bringing the spine nice and long. If you feel comfortable doing so, go ahead and close your eyes and begin to take a few breaths with me, taking a deep inhale through your nose and release through your mouth. Again, deep breath through the nose and release. One more time, inhale and exhale. If it's more comfortable, go ahead and bring those hands down to the thighs. You can keep those eyes closed, letting just a sense of rest and peace starting to wash into your body. While you're holding, I'm going to read our scripture over you. In Psalms 40, verse 1, it says, I waited and waited and waited some more, patiently knowing God would come through for me. Then, at last, he bent down and listened to my cry. Maybe that is where you're finding yourself today, in a season where you're having to wait on God, not knowing the answers of what is to come. But I want to encourage you today that God knows what's on the other side of any battle that you're facing. He knows what's on the other side of your mountain. So use this time when you're in the wait to draw closer to God. Just a few more breaths here in your toe squat, and we're going to transition. Go ahead and release those toes coming down to the knees. We're gonna come into a pigeon pose. You don't have to do anything fancy to get there. We're just going to come down into our pigeon pose, bringing one leg in front of you and one leg is long behind you. If you have blocks and want a little more support, then you can put that right under the front thigh or you can put a block in front of you to come and rest the forearms on. Finding where this feels good in your body today. And if you wanted to fold all the way down into a sleeping pigeon, feel free to do so. In our yin style of practices, we always want to be pushing ourselves to our edge, but we never wanna push past our edge. So you're just wanting to feel a nice deep stretch. If you're feeling any sort of pain, then you need to come out of the pose. We want to feel sensation, never pain. Moving forward with our scripture. He stooped down to lift me out of danger from the desolate pit I was in, out of the muddy mess I had fallen into. Now he's lifted me up into a firm, secure place and studied me while I walk along his ascending path. And maybe that's where you find yourself today, in that place where you're waiting on God. You feel like you have gotten yourself into this pit, this desolate pit. You're in a muddy mess, and you're waiting on God to come and scoop you out. Friend, I want you to know 
that he is there with you. He has his hands all over your mess and he is just waiting to lift you out. You are growing stronger through whatever battle that you are facing today. Taking three more breaths with me here in your pigeon pose. Go ahead and take a deep breath in and release. Taking a deep breath in through the nose and release from the mouth. One more time, deep breath in and release. Go ahead and plant those hands into the mat, pushing the chest back up. We're going to pivot our body around, coming into shoelace pose. So that right knee is going to be stacked on top of the left. Go ahead and grab your ankles, taking a moment to let your hips settle into this posture. This can also feel intense if your hips are very tight. So sometimes we modify by coming and bringing that knee up just a little bit, or you can grab a block and sit it underneath your sits bones. So taking two breaths with me, letting the hips settle, inhaling, and exhale, Feeling stress wash, wash off of you with every exhale. Another deep breath in and release. You can keep your hands resting on the ankles or bring those hands to heart center, closing your eyes, just coming into a posture of prayer. I'm going to keep reading over you. A new song for a new day rises up in me. Every time I think about how he breaks through for me, ecstatic praise pours out of my mouth until everyone hears how God has set me free. Many will see his miracles. They'll stand in awe of God and fall in love with him. Blessing after blessing comes to those who love and trust the Lord. They will not fall away for they refuse to listen to the lies of the proud. A new song for a new day is rising up in you, friend, because God is breaking through for you. So let that ecstatic praise pour out of you, knowing that God is on your side, knowing that he is already fighting your battles for you that you are under his wings and he is taking care of you, whatever you're walking through today. You can trust that we have a good father. You can trust that you're being taken care of. Two more deep breaths with me. Deep inhale. Exhale, release all stress. One more time, deep breath in through the nose and release. Go ahead and release, unwind those legs. Take a moment to shake the legs out. And then again, we're not doing anything fancy to get into this posture, but we're gonna come into dragon pose. In other styles of yoga, they call it lizard pose. So coming in to your dragon, we want to make sure that that front ankle is in alignment with the knee bringing the hands down by the foot. So some options here is you could take a block and put it under your knee. If you have any form of knee contradictions, then this helps just soften the pressure that is on your knee. You could bring a block to sit underneath your hands for a little more support. And when you're ready, if you want to take this posture a little bit further, you could come to the forearms, maybe coming down onto your block or coming all the way down onto your mat. And we're going to hold this pose. And many instructors say that within about 90 seconds of this posture, you will know why it is called dragon pose because there will be a fire that starts heating up in the legs. And when you feel 
that pressure or you want to come out of the pose, then I want you to start focusing your breath to the tight spaces. If you notice today that the hips are tight or maybe the hamstrings are tight, I want you to honor your body, but also know that it's okay to stretch and that it's okay that we can focus our breath towards those tight spaces. I'm going to start reading over you again while you hold. Oh, Lord, our God, no one can compare with you. Such wonderful works and miracles are all found with you. And you think of us all the time with your countless expressions of love, far exceeding our expectations. He's always thinking about you. God is always thinking about you. And we can find his wonderful works and his miracles in everything that he does. And we can see in our life the expressions of love that he pours out to us. A couple more breaths here. Keep holding with me. Taking a deep breath in. And release. One more time, deep breath in and let go. Again, no fancy way of coming out of this, but we're going to move into pigeon on the other side. So my right leg is coming to the front. The other leg is long behind you. You could pull that leg a little bit closer into the body and it will help you relax into the posture a little bit more. If you have more flexibility, then pull that leg on out. I want you to let those shoulders drop away from the ears. Take a moment here, feeling that upper body nice and strong. And then again, if you want to bring a block to come underneath the forearms or even a block to set underneath your head, feel free to do so. Continuing to just let those hips surrender. We tend to carry our stress in our hips. So continuing to just let that stress melt off of you. It's not sacrifices that really move your heart. Burnt offerings, sin offerings, that's not what brings you joy. But when you open my ears and speak deeply to me, I become your willing servant, your prisoner of love for life. Maybe using this time to just ask God to open your ears, and to open your heart, and allowing yourself to hear what he is speaking to you today, allowing yourself to see how he is coming through for you, how he is showing up for you, even when you find yourself in the muddy mess, even when you're in the darkest pit, God will show up for you. He will come through for you, and you can trust in that hope today. Two more breaths here. Taking that deep inhale through the nose. And exhale. One more time. Deep breath in. And release. Slowly pressing those palms into your mat, lifting the upper body up, coming into shoelace on the opposite side. So those knees are stacking on top of each other. Again, we're giving ourselves a moment to let those hips settle in, finding blocks, support, whatever you need for this posture. Bringing your hands to the ankles, closing your eyes and begin to breathe. Allowing yourself to be open to receiving what God has for you today. Allowing the ears to be open and the heart to soften, to hear that still small voice 
that wants to tell you, I'm here to rescue you. God is our rescuer. Jesus is our savior. And they always come through for us. So I said, here I am. I'm coming to you as a sacrifice. For in the prophetic scrolls of your book, you have written about me. I delight to fulfill your will, my God, for your living words are written upon the pages of my heart. God has already written about you. And as we dive into his word, I just think that is a beautiful visual that his scripture becomes written on our heart that we can carry with us through whatever we're going through. Through any hard times, we can allow that scripture to just surface up for us and encourage us and fill us with hope. If you want, take a moment to just bring those hands to heart center, just finding yourself in that posture of prayer. Getting comfortable in the silence. And being receptive to hearing what God is speaking to you in this moment. Go ahead and release those hands. Release those legs. Let's stretch out what we've just done. Bringing those legs long. Just go ahead and take a moment to shake those legs out. And then we're going to come back into our dragon pose on the opposite side. So one foot comes to the front of the mat. The other leg is coming behind you. In this posture, I tend to have some knee contradictions myself from being a runner. So I like to keep my back toes tucked when I'm holding these postures. It feels better on my knee to do that. So you might try that. And again, you could put a block underneath the knees, bring your block right under your hands. So maybe right here is where your body is at today. This is where it feels good for you. But if you wanna take it further, bringing those forearms down to the mat or on a block, go ahead and do so. And if you are, I want you to just turn your hands, palms facing up, just as that outward sign that you're surrendering and that you're open to receive. Holding, breathing in to the tight spaces. I tell everyone everywhere the truth of your righteousness, and you know I haven't held back in telling the message to all. I don't keep it a secret or hide the truth. I preach of your faithfulness and kindness, proclaiming your extravagant love to the largest crowd I can find. So something I want to suggest to you while you're holding in this dragon pose is maybe that you pray for God to fill you with boldness, that you can start sharing his word with the largest crowd that you can find, that you won't feel intimidation to share his truth or to share the gospel. I'm praying today that right now that you feel that holy boldness filling you up because we are each called to share his truth. The pit that you're in today, that muddy mess, you're gonna come to the other side and you're going to be able to share that with others, how God pulled you out of your mess. So keep praying for that holy boldness. Two more breaths here. Take that deep breath in and exhale. Last one, deep breath in and exhale. Making your way to a child's pose. You can bring those knees wide to the outer edges of the mat. 
In extending those arms, there's always options to come to the forearm or to bring a block to rest your forehead on. Finding where this feels good in your body. And with every exhale, I want you to surrender your chest a little closer to the mat. Continuing to breathe, letting the body relax. So Lord, don't hold back your love or withhold your tender mercies from me. Keep me in your truth and let your compassion overflow to me no matter what I face. No matter what you're facing, let his truth and his compassion overflow in you because he's never holding back his mercies from us. Just a couple more moments here. Letting rest wash over your body. Letting all the little muscles relax. Slowly planting those hands into the mat, rolling the spine up one vertebrae at a time. We're going to come down into our sphinx pose. In sphinx, we want our elbows to be right underneath the shoulders. The upper body is going to support you in this posture. Your chest is lifted up. Something I like to do is to grab a block and I sit it right at my chest. That just helps bring a little more support into the posture for myself. So now I want you to focus on releasing the muscles of the legs. This is a active yin pose, meaning that we're having to hold that upper body up. And we tend to want to clench our body and tighten up when we're in these active postures. So I want you to focus on letting the legs completely release. The lower body is not supporting you. The upper body is supporting you. This is a good heart opening posture. So maybe closing the eyes and letting a slight smile come to your face as you're just thinking of God's goodness and thinking of the way that he takes care of you, the way he loves you, the way that he has never failed you. He has never failed you yet, and he's not going to fail you today. As we keep going through Psalms 40, it says, Evil surrounds me. Problems greater than I can solve come one after another. Without you, I know I can't make it. My sins are so many. I'm so ashamed to lift my face to you, for my guilt grabs and stings my soul until I am weakened and spent. We've all felt this way, feeling like our sins are just too much, that we're even too ashamed to face God. But he wants our brokenness. He wants the dark parts of us as much as he wants us to be living in his light. To move into that light, we have to hand over those places that we want to keep hidden the dark parts, the place where we feel shame, where our sin wants to overtake us. So in these final couple moments of this posture, whatever is surfacing for you, maybe using this moment to surrender any negative feelings that you're carrying to God. You're going to press your hands into the mat, tuck those toes, coming back, and we're going to make our way down into a seated posture. We're coming into fish pose. There's a couple ways that you can do this, and we won't stay here long, but we're going to bring our hands right under our hip bones. The elbows can come to the mat, and you can let your head fall behind you. If this is too intense you can oh, and you have blocks, then I want you to make a T-shape with your blocks. 
You're going to continue to put your hands right at the sits bone, letting your body fall onto your blocks, repositioning if you need, and then you can just let those arms surrender. Once again, this is another deep heart opening posture. Letting your body relax. Shame is washing off of you. You don't need to carry it anymore. Maybe in this moment, asking God to search your heart and reveal to you any places that you're trying to hide from him. Any secret shames or sins that you're holding on that you're, you need to release to him today. Please, Lord, come quickly and rescue me. Take pleasure in showing me your favor and restore me. He will come quickly and he will rescue you. He always does. God always comes through for us. Two more breaths here in your fish pose. This can feel a little intense on our neck, so we won't stay long. Deep breath in and fully release. You're going to slowly roll the body up. And we're going to make our way into a bridge pose. If you have a block, I want you to bring that block and sit it right underneath the hips. You can also just get a firm pillow or like a couch pillow and put it under your hips. So once it's there, go ahead and relax those arms. Your feet are hip width apart. I want you to feel the calf muscles releasing and the thigh muscles releasing, letting the back soften and allowing those arms to be heavy, resting in God's truth in this moment, resting in his peace, surrendering to his love. Remembering in this moment that you are a child of God. The way that you love your own children, our Heavenly Father loves us more. His love is unimaginable for our human minds. But let all who passionately seek you erupt with excitement and joy over what you've done. Let all your lovers rejoice continually in the Savior saying, how great and glorious is our God. When you get through this battle, when you make it to the other side, I pray for that holy boldness in you that you're going to be able to erupt with excitement and share praises and share with others what God has done for you. Two more breaths here, taking that deep inhale and fully release. Last time, deep breath in and release. Removing the block from underneath your back and making your way into your final resting posture. I want you to feel the feet relaxing to the sides letting those calf muscles release and the thighs surrender. The stress is gone in the hips. The back is soft and your shoulders melt. Your arms are heavy. Your hands are heavy. Tension is gone from the neck. The full weight of your head surrenders into your mat releasing your face, and releasing your jaw. Going to finish our scripture. Lord, in my place of weakness and need, I ask again, will you come and help me? I know I'm always in your thoughts. You are my true savior and hero. So don't delay to deliver me now, for you are my God.
allow him to take your weaknesses. Allow him to be glorified through your weakness. Friend, I want you to stay in your final resting posture for as long as you need, but I am going to close this practice in prayer. Lord God, I just love you so much, and I just want to thank you for every single person that is moving and practicing with me today. I thank you that you know the other side of our battles When we're in that pit, God, we can be so filled with despair. It can be so discouraging, and we can feel a sense of hopelessness. But Father, you are our hope. Your scripture, your word, your truth is our hope that we can cling to in these hard times. God, I trust that you pull us out of our muddy messes. You rescue us from the desolate pits. And you love us through it all. I thank you for being such a good father. Today and always, I give you all glory and all praise. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, amen. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. So you've rolled up your mat and you've taken care of your body, but are you taking care of your mind and your heart? In a season where I found myself completely overwhelmed and anxious with day-to-day life, I recognized that something was missing. And that something was daily routine and self-care and love. So over the next few months, I began to build new habits, a new routine, and some consistency that really brought life back into my heart, into my mind, and into my body. And I want to share that with you. Head on over to dailysoulcare.com and grab your free copy today.